I was walking through the store the other day thinking how long I have been seeing all of these Christmas ads and all of these Christmas toys and it's a really concerted effort that all of the advertisers are going to to get us to buy their stuff and I fall for it. I fall for it every year I swear that I will just want Christmas to be such an amazing experience for my kids and then I spend money on stuff that I don't want them to have. I just don't want them to have a sad Christmas morning and it ends up being a hassle later when I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this stuff and then I end up giving it away and that's a waste of money and time and they didn't even like it anyway. So I wanted to go over some things. I'm not telling you how to do Christmas because I haven't even cracked the code on how to do Christmas really well. I don't know how to make it the perfect experience, but I have found that some toys I don't hate them afterward. You know, some of the toys the kids will open and immediately I'm thinking that is so big. I don't know where we're going to put that. I'm not sure that, I, I think it's limiting actually. They can't be as imaginative because they've got to be right here in this, you know, big boat or little kitchen that we got for them or whatever. And they can't just take their imagination wherever they need to take it. And I just don't want to deal with how big it is and how much space it's taking up. It's kind of a hassle that way. Um, there are other things that I buy that I think I, they're only going to play with those a couple of times. That was a really bad idea. It was super shiny and I wish I hadn't bought that. And there are other things that just break. They don't even make it to the end of Christmas and it's just not a good idea because maybe my kids don't know how to play gently enough with them or maybe they're kind of poorly made or whatever. And so I feel a lot of dissatisfaction with those type of things. But they, there have been some games and toys that we have bought over the years that have been really, really successful. And I've been really happy that we bought them. And so I thought, you can buy whatever you want for Christmas for your kids. But I just wanted to tell you, these are the things that we've gotten over the years I do not regret. <laughs> Hey guys, since filming this, it has occurred to me that I actually have something that can help you during the Christmas time. And so if you'll stay till the end of the video, I will have a special offer just for you. So the first one comes with the obvious caveat of, I know it kills to step on these, like so much pain, but Aside from that, they are really amazing and that is just Legos. My kids love Legos. One year we bought, I mean, I, I get it, Legos are really, really expensive, so we actually bought some, some used Legos. Somebody was just getting rid of a, a whole huge three drawers full of Legos and we went and bought all of them and my kids have played with those for years and years and years. They just never get old. They have so much fun with these Legos. I will say something that I discovered on my journey with Legos is this bag. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this bag. Legos are loud. But when we first got Legos, we had them in that plastic drawer container and it kind of, it broke over time and it was so loud. The kids would get out the Legos and they would, you know, move them around in that plastic drawer and it was so loud. I was having a hard time reading over the top of it. And then we had to move and that plastic thing just was not going to make it through the move. It was already kind of beat up. So I bought these bags and I'm just going to link them for you because I don't know what they're called, but they're these nylon bags that hold all of this stuff up tight, all the Legos in it, but then they have a drawstring that opens and it turns into a big round circle on the ground and the kids are able to open it and play most of their Legos on that round thing because that was the other thing with Legos is that they would spread them all over the whole room and then cleaning up was such a nightmare that they didn't want to play with them again even though they loved playing with Legos. So this drawstring thing solved both of those problems. It's way quieter and it's also um, keeps everything more or less gathered. And so it doesn't, and you don't lose as many Legos that way because they all stay in it. So that was something I discovered on the way, probably worth the purchase. It is really nice to have those bags. And if you're moving, it does actually move much better than trying to keep it in that plastic bin. So I love Legos for my kids. I love that they get to discover and um, build with those. Another one that we've had in the past is Lincoln Logs. They're okay. I like Lincoln Logs, but I find that my kids didn't love them as much. We don't actually even own any today because it's not something that they keep coming back to and back to. But for a while, they enjoyed playing with Lincoln Logs. So I know that these sound like, you know, World War I type toys. <laughs> like they're really, really old and sometimes it feels like, oh, my poor kids, they're not going to be able to get the newest and brightest. But these things last. They last because they um, engage the brain and are really fun through a lot of different ages and in a lot of different ways. So so yeah, they're old, but they're really, really fun. The next one is basically the same idea and it's connects. I don't know if you can, if you're familiar with these. They build 
a million different things with these. Um, when we first got them, my kids took a really long time to figure out how to use them. And it wasn't until my fourth child came along when suddenly he was like, oh, like this. And he makes shields and boats and um, flying ships and all sorts of things out of connects. He loves his connects. They are as versatile to him as Legos were to my other kids. So I don't know that it works for every kid, but for sure, for some kids, the connects are a huge win. That was, I love buying connects. And you can buy them, I don't know if you can get just like random connects. We usually buy them in a set that allows them to build a specific thing with it. But then you can also just kind of put them in a bin like we've done and then use that over time to build whatever creative things they want to come up with. Another really old but really effective toy is blocks. And you can get different types of blocks. We've, we've had a lot of different types of blocks over time. Some of them have like pictures on them and, and little um, curves in them so that you can create castle looking things. And some of them are all just literally cubes and you can build different things with them. I find, because I have so many boys, generally they will build something that they can throw blocks at and knock it down. But whatever, I don't know, maybe if you have girls, they'll build princess castles, I don't know. but. They have a lot of fun playing with blocks, way more fun than I think they would with just, literally, these are cubes of wood. And yet, through the years, I have discovered those things are effective toys. They are really, really a lot of fun. They have to learn how to create and to balance and to imagine something and bring it into being. So it is, it's simple, but they love blocks. Something that we came on quite late in our parenting was kinetic sand. And I think we came on it pretty quick after it was created, but oh my goodness, it is the coolest thing. It feels so just amazing. And you can build stuff and have it keep its shape when you let go. It's like dealing with wet sand all of the time, but the sand isn't wet. It just has some polymer in it that holds it all together. I will say, if you get it wet, it will mold. Don't ask me how I know. Just keep it dry and it works really well. Uh, if it's dry, I've never had it go bad. It just stays good for a very, very long time, but it is important, don't get it wet. Coloring books is another one that I am surprised at how simple it is, but the kids just love it, love it, love it. Especially if I will take the time to get in and color with them. And I have found that I like coloring way more than I ever did as a kid. As a kid, I felt like I don't know how, and I'm not sure what it's supposed to look like, and I don't know how to blend the colors or whatever. And now as an adult, I, I don't care. And so I'm getting in there and I'm coloring and my kids will want to do what I'm doing. And so they'll get in there and color too. Coloring books are a great gift. They're something that kids can do while while you're reading to them, while they're listening to an audiobook, while they're listening even to a movie, if you want them to have their hands busy during that. Coloring books are huge. It's so simple. I'm not giving you any really complicated or battery operated anything, but these things, they work. These are the things that last through a lot of time. Another huge hit that we've had over the years are tangrams. No, this is not the tangram. This is um, a little block. And I don't, I don't know where we got this. I'm not sure if this is even out there that you can buy this, but um, this shows how you can make different designs with tangrams. That's a snail. This is a rabbit. There are just a couple different designs on there. Flower. And then you take, my kids very seldom actually do those. Sometimes they will, but usually they'll just take these tangrams which are little things in different shapes, triangles. I'm not gonna tell you that shape because <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of different shapes that they have in here and then they can create all of these patterns and my kids are so proud of it. Like I have to clean the camera off quite often because they take all these pictures of the different designs that they have created with their tangrams. And again, you've got a girl boy thing going on where my daughter will make these beautiful intricate designs and my son will create a fortress that they then bomb each other with. So you can use them in a lot of different ways, but I have found that these are a really great thing to have around the house that they can play with in a a quiet time that and you know you, maybe if you're taking quiet time this is a good one to have during quiet time that they can play and you can go get a rest but I have just loved tangrams through the years it has been awesome also in this same bin we have um, some magnets that my kids play with. And in fact, we put them in the same bin because they will oftentimes connect them. They will put these down as the base, um, maybe make a, 
a fort with these right here. And then they'll use the tangrams to build out and create a moat or whatever they want to create with that. Um, but those magnet toys are often really a lot of fun as well. I find that they are not as versatile as some of the other things that I've talked about today that you're kind of locked into what you can do with the magnets, but they still really enjoy them and have fun with those, especially when they combine them with things like the tangrams that they, they're not linked and they'll, they'll do that with blocks too. You know, they'll take this and they'll make my fortresses over here, or maybe they'll create a drawbridge out of these at, that goes with the blocks. So I do love the magnets, not necessarily for what you can do just with them, but for what they can become in combination with other toys. I thought I had it here, but I don't have it. Maybe I can find some B-roll footage of it. But we have these pictures that you, they have kind of a blue picture on top of a black background. And then you use a, a scratchy stylus that cuts off the blue. And once you cut off all of that blue, it has these beautiful colors underneath so that you have now a black background and a gorgeous picture that pops out. That is something that requires a lot of delicate movements. Um, if you wanna do the one that has the natural picture behind it, there are also some little scratch art where it's just plain black there's no picture back there but you can scratch it and makes different colors pop out and so just depending on your age of your kids and how much they want to do but man my kids love those surprisingly they love them so much it surprised me because I thought this is going to probably be beyond your ability to do but they really really love the details and the intricacy and seeing the creation come out from this scratch art and kind of on that same note um, is diamond painting and I've called it something, or I've seen it called something else. I think jewel painting maybe is what I've seen. I don't know. I'll see if I can find some and link it for you. But they, it is really beautiful. All it is is there is a picture that has been broken down into these little tiny circles. And then you get these tiny jewels in a packet. They, they come in their individual envelopes. And so you'll get out, you know, packet number 3215 and you'll put it in your little um, container and you can take each of those jewels and set it on the circle, the numbered circle on your picture and it's sticky. Your picture has just like, I don't know, serious glue on there. It's really, really sticky. And it holds onto those gems so that by the time you put all the gems on it, it makes this glittering, beautiful picture of um, whatever the design was that was putting it forward. I, again, I'm surprised at how much my kids love doing that because it is kind of a, a high intensity <laughs> focus. But if you've got a kid who loves crafts and you're trying to take it to the next level, I, absolutely diamond painting is a really beautiful way to do that. Fidget toys are another huge hit in our house. Um, specifically, that, well, we have a lot of fidget toys that we like to play with, but these ones are interesting. These are actually magnets. And therefore, if you have little kids, I am not advising that you get these because they're not only magnets, but they're really smooth and they're kind of shiny. And so <laughs> it feels like, oh, that's something a baby is going to stick in their mouth. Absolutely. So I would not have these with very little kids in the house, but if you've got older kids, these are so much fun. Um, I am amazed at how many games my kids have come up with. Literally, these are just magnets. <laughs> they didn't come with instructions or with any sort of um, game attached to them, but they will take these and they set them out on a board and then they sort of shoot a magnet through the middle. And if, if, you, if the magnet touches other magnets, it pulls them together and as many get pulled together, they have to pull them off and those are their magnets. And the first person to get their magnet all the way through without hitting any other magnets or gathering them up wins. And so my kids get really strategic about it that they will actually flip them upside down so that they are more likely to trip up the opponent I don't play games like that with my kids. They are just too hard. But the kids have a ton of fun with these magnets. Um, I did not play with magnets growing up. I know that a lot of people talked about it and it's something that they sort of pushed, but I just never really enjoyed magnets. But my kids really, really love magnets. So I guess it depends if your kids like it or not. That is, can be a really great gift. There are other fidget toys out there. Um, infinity cubes are just really awesome. Cubes, things that you can get that kids can play with. Um, they're, they're little and they're easy, but it's something that will allow them to have that texture and that motion, especially if you've got a kid who just really can't hold still. This is something that you can give them that allows them to put their energy somewhere so that it can focus with their mind while you're teaching them. And finally, if you want to give them games, strategy games. This is such a basic thing. Um, this is called classic three-in-one games, but it's got chess, checkers, and backgammon. 
backgammon. My kids actually enjoy playing backgammon with me. I've got one kid who is huge into strategy games. He's really, really good at thinking strategically. So he really likes those games. Um, another game just like that sort of strategy thinking game is Labyrinth. Um, so any of these types of games can be tons of fun for your kids to play because you're not always going to be doing school that is intense. Sometimes you're going to be doing learning that is strategic thinking. And the best way to do that is just to have them have a game that they can play and do on their own. They don't even know that they're learning, but it's just so much fun. And at the same time, they really are learning a lot of really important life skills. So when it comes to Christmas, I am not telling you what to buy. I'm just saying over time, I've discovered some of these really old things that uh, they have been around for a really long time are really, really effective toys. And a lot of what I've said has to do with boys and not girls because I generally have boys. I have way more boys than I have girls. And so I've had more experience with the types of things that boys really enjoy doing. But any of them are probably going to work for any gender because, you know, blocks, they're blocks. They're gonna work for whoever. So good luck. Shopping for Christmas can be a lot of work. It can be really hard. I hope that you're able to find just the perfect gift for everybody because as a mom, that can be one of the ways that we show a lot of love and show that we care about them enough to know what works for them and what they would really find a lot of satisfaction from. Okay, thank you for staying for the end. Here's the offer. While we were going through a lot of the inventory that we have, I discovered that we have kind of some leftover stuff that when we put it all together, it turns into the perfect stocking stuffer kit. So if you are interested and you wanna make just one purchase and be done with the stocking stuff, then please check out the link that is in the description. I have two kits that we put together. There's not a lot. I'm just going to sell it until they're gone. But here's for the older kids. We have this eight in one kit that is um, little puzzles, little 3D puzzles that they have to work the objects around and, you know, get the loop off of the spring and get to all of these, you know, these two things that are stuck together, get them undone by twisting them in certain ways. We have a Sudoku puzzle. We have a 3D puzzle of Notre Dame, colored pencils, and finally, we have this very high quality, very challenging puzzle. This one happens to be a spiky ball that you have to twist in certain ways to get all the way out of this thing. You cannot take off either ends. You just have to get the ball out by twisting it. We have several other types of these puzzles that are not necessarily the spiky ball, and we're just going to send out, it'll, it'll be a random assortment, but I promise, whichever one you get, they're going to love because they are so much fun to solve and really very difficult. So it's for your, your puzzle lover, the one who really likes challenges, this is for them. The little kids kit also has five items in it. We have this spirograph that they can um, twist around and create lots of little designs. The fidget cube, which you saw my son playing with, we have just a ton of these and so they open some and play with them around the house. Um, of course, we can't find one right now to show it to you, but you do get a fidget cube and then an infinity cube as well. They can play with that. This comes in white and black and the fidget cubes come in a lot of different colors. Some crayons and the scratch art. This is the little one that has the stencil that you can work with and it's just plain on the on the black thing so you can make whatever kind of design you want. If you're interested in doing one and done, I will say up front, it doesn't have either a toothbrush or chapstick in it. Sorry, my bad. But it does have all of these nice little toys that you can just grab, dump, and be done with it. So if you're interested, follow the link. If not, that's awesome. Have a great Christmas and you are doing a fabulous job. Keep it up. I will see you on the next one.